Hi, my name is Neve Brennan. We're here today in Lifford to look at some of our great collections of archives. One of the greatest collections we have is the Donegal Grand Jury. It's our oldest public collection. Under the 1898 Local Government Act, grand juries were largely replaced by county councils and local authorities, modern local authorities. So the grand jury's um, functions were, were taken over by the county council in Donegal. Um, the grand jury had a, a lovely premises here in Lifford. It had the county house and it had its own um, dinner service and its own linens, its own chairs. And it didn't really want to give those up. And in fact, it didn't want to give up any of its premises to the county council. Um, so a series of letters um, were written between the county council members and the grand jury members. And this dispute about all these materials went on for quite a while. Um, here's an example of a letter from John Hamilton of Brown, Brown Hall, Ballantra to uh, Knox, um, another member of the grand jury, and actually a photograph, this photograph here, you can see Hamilton himself just here with the fab watch. So he is basically asking that a committee be formed to arrange with the county council for both bodies to use the room as required and that this committee be authorised to reserve for the sole use of the grand jury the silver service and the linen service as well. Now we're going to look at a Donegal Grand Jury map. And this is one of the oldest maps we have, possibly the oldest maps we have in our collection. Uh, the map was followed a survey by William McRae of the county of Donegal and commissioned, he was commissioned by the Grand Jury to do that survey. So the map is really interesting for a number of reasons. Um, it's, apart from its um, physical beauty and rare, the fact that it's so rare, it has listed uh, baronies, parishes, townlands, and the names of individual towns um, that we'd recognise now today, and, the, and smaller areas that may not be around. We have Stranorla, Convoy there, where um, you can see the name of the Montgomerys, who were the landlords there. And if you look up further up to the very top of the county, just near Tory there on your right, you'll see the Alferts, where the land, landlords in charge there, and the Stuarts at Hornhead. So there's a number of landlords um, mentioned uh, on this map, which is a really interesting f facet of it. I mean, the, the map is an original as well. It's, it's pre-ordinance survey, so that makes it even more interesting. And you have this beautiful milestone that was drawn for it. I'm just going to fold it back up again now because it is very delicate. This bound volume is a minute book of the Donegal Grand Jury, dating from 1815 to 1857. These minutes were of the meetings of the Donegal Grand Jury taken at the spring and summer assizes in those years. This minute book is highly revealing about the structure of the authority itself. Its members are all very well known and very wealthy Protestant landowners. Each meeting involved setting up committees to carry out various works and each committee was made up of grand jury members. The grand jury's own self-indulgence is in evidence with several references, including during the famine, to ordering wine from a supplier in Dublin for itself. These recorded actions stand in stark contrast to one in 1849 Outline, outlining the grand jury, how it was deciding to modify the diet in the county jail in Lifford, which it believed was of too liberal a character and was encouraging people to commit petty crimes to get into the jail rather than just applying for relief in the workhouse. You can see this here in this minute book. A year later, though, the same members appointed a committee with full powers to regulate all matters concerning the supply of dinner wines to the grand jury. There are many references to the police force in the minutes, mainly with regard to rent or closure of barracks. The grand jury minute the difficulties encountered by the RIC in tackling land disturbances in the county, including during the famine years. It's fascinating to see how rural life in Donegal is viewed in these minutes from the perspective of the landowning ruling class that make up the grand jury. A specific minute relating to the RIC, which I'm going to highlight today, is the spring assizes of 1850. These report on the numbers in the constabulary and it was compiled by two members of the grand jury, a baronet from Remelton, James Stewart, and John Vandeleur Stewart of Rock Hill. The report is very detailed statistically. It stated that Donegal had only half the police force of Meath, despite it being two thirds of Donegal's population and with Donegal having problems with agrarian disturbances. It's reported that Donegal had only one policeman for every 1,684 inhabitants compared to, for example, one policeman for every 485 in Louth. It lists the exact numbers of police and the percentages by area and population, and it's from the 1841 census in each county. 
So basically the report sets out its case for additional permanent police quite well, reporting that Donegal is the fourth largest county in area, the 10th in population and only the 26th in police numbers. The report points out to what it refers to as Donegal's disadvantages in its geography and it describes the intersections and indentations of the county by deep bays which make it very difficult for centralisation of police in the county. Basically, the report sought more equal distribution of numbers of police across the 32 counties. The Lord Lieutenant's reply was not satisfactory though. He stated that Donegal had had opportunities to look for extra police over the years, but it hadn't done so. Any increase in one police force would lead to confusion and terminable disputes, he said. Therefore, while a lot of work obviously went into this report, little reward came the grand jury's way. All these grand jury records, the series of correspondence, the photograph, the minute book, and uh, the presentments, they're all available to view here um, in Lifford at our archives and they're also online on our website. <laughs> <laughs>